Hey YouTube, this is Pack Tech, and this week I decided to take a little bit of a break and just show you a seminar that I attended at my local fish store. Unfortunately, it's a little bit noisy in the back and the fellow is, is very intelligent and well-spoken, but kind of soft-spoken, so it's a little bit difficult to hear him. But I played with the audio as much as I can to hopefully uh, bring you guys in and let you share the same experience I had. It was a really re interesting discussion. It did go on for about two hours. I cut that to about an hour and a half, and I'm putting a time code up here if you'd like to skip around to something maybe you're a little bit more curious about. Okay, without further ado, I'll see you on the other side. Tells us, means do a transition. Um, and I also have coupon vouchers for those of you who are attending, so you can receive 10% off everything mentioned in the class. And all you have to do is give these to the cashier to be able to redeem them. He's good, okay, excellent. So, um, with that being said, this is Andrea, and uh, we're going to let him take it from here. Okay, thank you so much. Two people, what is an aquarium? Basically, because we forget, we are very, we pay, maybe very focused to understand how many milliliters of supplements we need to add, and we forget why we are adding that kind of supplements. So, aquarium is an ecosystem, right? Like a lake, like a sea, but we have a big limit, and the big limit is the glasses five glasses. So we must remember that every time that we add something, some part of this supplement is absorbed by the plants or by the fish, if you're talking about trace elements for example, but part of them stay in the water. So we should be able to understand how many milliliters in function of the tank, uh, in function of the light, in function of the how many fish we have, in function of uh, and looking. The secret is looking your tank. So this is why I say passion. It's chemistry, is biology, but it's also passion. So I usually what I what I do usually when I come back home, the first thing is look my plant, the planting tank. The same thing in the office. Every morning I spend five minutes and I watch what the plant suggests me, what the plant uh, show me, what kind of deficiency. So these help me to understand how my ecosystem is going on. <laughs> the, the question is, uh, before to start up a new tank, we, I, I usually recommend to ask a question, how much time I can invest every week for my tank? This is basically the answer, explain you, uh, tell you which kind of tank, the size of the tank, the size, the kind of light you need, the kind of plants. So, if you have 30 minutes a week, probably the tank that we set up today, or probably this one, is enough because you have plants that are growing very slowly. You know, these, you don't need a very performance light, or you can maybe you can buy a dimmerable light, so you can adjust the, the lighting, the, the, the intensity of the light, and so you customize your tank in function of your time. You have, if you have three hours <laughs> a weekend, I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, but this, this means that you can choose maybe different lights, different plants, plants are growing very fast, and so you can prune every week, and so you can change the layout of your tank every month, so it's more dynamic layout. The 30 minutes tank <laughs> a week, is it more static, but it's important to customize the tank in function of your time because I would like to remember that it's a hobby, it's not a work. Right? <laughs> so when we come back. that again? Yeah. <laughs> it's a hobby, <laughs> not a work. No, this is very important because I see many people arrive in the store and buy everything and start with a big empathy. No? And after a month, you were not able to maintain their tank because the tank was too too much work for them and so they remove everything they put in a garage or on eBay <laughs> or something else. So it is very important. Uh, so in fashion of this we move the other side. <laughs> and then, it's a question that we, some people ask me, many people ask me is especially when we talk about aquascaping is where you find the inspiration because aquascaping means replicate 
a kind of piece of nature in something that is not part of the nature. So replicating means check and understand the detail of the nature and replicate with our different our point of view. This makes this a different day, this upper scale, what means upper scale. And I usually recommend when people say, where do you find your inspiration when you look? I usually answer and say, I prefer to go, don't go online. <laughs> this is the reason. It's not because there are many information on that. Because we risk to lose our uh, capacity to uh, creative, to be creative, right? Because we don't understand. We are copying something. If we see a beautiful time online, beautiful picture, we say, oh, I would like to replicate that time, that layout. It's not possible because every first, because every piece of, of roots and stones that we find in the market is totally different, it's natural material. The second thing is because we don't understand why that person put in that specific position a specific plant or a specific rock. It's like when I was in university, I used to, I used to don't copy the exam. <laughs> But there was a one exam that I was not able to pass. It was <laughs> organic chemistry. Organic chemistry for me was a nightmare. <laughs> so I say, okay, I don't care. This exam, I copy. <laughs> so <laughs> I was my friend, I had a ticket, and I took a ticket. And I tried to do this exam, and during the ticket, the professor see me and say, Mr. Rongaro, please <laughs> go outside. See you next month. Next month I study, and I'm grateful for that because now I work for a company where I use chemistry every day. <laughs> so probably, if that exam I copy today, I'm not. I don't mean that I'm not able to do this work, but probably this knowledge helped me to do that. It's the same thing if you take your bad shoes and you go on the woods and you start to walk, maybe near the river, and you start to see where different species growing. The easier example is the is the fern. Fern and moss. It's a good association. So fern and moss we can find the same species into the woods, near the river, in the shadow places, and we can have similar species also available for the aquarium. So Java fern is a kind of fern, right? And that's the film by Barry, Java Moss, the same thing. So we can just do inspiration to use two species in our aquarium. And where we usually where usually this plant grows in the woods, not in supposed places, but in the shadow places, maybe under the trees, near the rocks. And if for example we bring if it was a branch in a tree outside, with the the moss or the fern in this case. Only. Really? Only okay. doesn't grow here because if we if we could image that rain, the water flow very fast, and so this plant needs moisture, and if this plant growing outside, probably it can grow here because it's a very dry part of the branch. Probably this plant grow here because if rain, the water come through here, and come through here, and this is the place where it's most moisture, most humidity in the branch. So learning and what looking what where the plants growing in the wood help me to understand why maybe this specific plant is better to place in a specific part of my layout and not in the other. So everything that we we're talking about, many people talk about aquascaping is like an art. I prefer to say that aquascaping is design. Art is something that you create just for because it's beauty. Design is because you are made in something for a reason, for because you use something everything that you do in a design is because Makes sense, right? So this is why I prefer to explain 
I was thinking like design, you know, like oh, this is a kind of art for many people, yes, of course. Another thing, so find the inspiration. Try to understand why and build your your style. I don't I don't want to make any influence. So every everybody have a specific own style and because everybody has a specific point of view, right? Mine is different than yours. The second is how to choose the decoration, the decoration, okay? And how to choose the substrate. So there are many decorations available. Probably the spider, this spider hood, right? The little spider hood here is the more, more common and easier to use because they are not very straight. So they are very, uh, say, wavy, curved, curved, So you can use very indifferent. If you have one piece or one straight, you have no many choice. So I usually like to use this kind of material. And what I usually try, I go to the store and I choose the, the pieces that are good for my tank. Good dimension, good uh, proportion for my tank because it's very important also to find pieces that for this tank there's no reason to use a piece big like this. So because not this is a, the has the, the decoration are the hardscape of the layout, the hard part, so it's the skeleton of the layout. So this could be um, enough, this could be enough volume uh, for for the tank. It's very important. I usually have this kind of proportion, so I choose a, a, a branch, a, a wood that is at least uh, high, more than the height higher of the tank. So no less than the 50% of the higher of the tank. So this is just an idea how to choose the dimension. It's also very important to don't choose too big, this is too big, because we, there are, the problem that you have is to be also in the after the tank with the circulation of the water. The, the actual um, orientation of the aquascaping, especially the aquascaping for the contest, you know, there are many contests in the, in, around the world, which uh, photo contest about aquascaping. And the orientation of aquascaping actually is create something, a layout that is already done, already finished. So they use a lot of decoration, a lot of rocks, a lot of wood. And this, this is good because it will give you a result immediately. But it's not good under the point of view, um, chemical and biological point of view. Because if you, reduce, if you put a lot of stuff, you reduce the water circulation in the tank. So this means you accumulate organics. Organics mean algae. So your maintenance, if, if, if you, uh, if you, if you uh, set up a tank for spend 30 minutes <laughs> for maintenance after putting a lot of stuff, putting over, uh, over, populate, over populate. Populate. okay, you increase the time that you need for, uh, for the maintenance. So it's not good, right? It's not good because you, your tank is not stable. I have two keywords when I talk about tank is stability and equilibrium. It's very important to maintain our environment yeah. very stable because everybody lives better in a stable environment. I really would like to spend my time on in something tropical island <laughs> because it's very stable. We have 75 Fahrenheit in uh, 12 months per year but it's not possible. Uh, so well, we use it. it's very easy to understand why stable is better. If we remember, when we usually get sick, not in the summer, not in the winter, but when the season changes, because our body is trying to adjust, adjust okay, the same temperature. So it's the same thing for in, the, in our aquarium. If we have an unstable, for example, the pH is very unstable, the plants 
and the pH basically same. What happened? This morning the pH was 7 and the afternoon was 6.5. And they spend a lot of energy to fighting and find the equilibrium point. And if we're talking about plants, if they spend if the plants spend energy to find the new equilibrium point, they are not able to absorb efficiently the supplements that we are having. So this is why it's very important to maintain a very thing. And equilibrium I'm talking about I just introduced these arguments. I'm talking about how many milliliters of supplement, for example, we, we must be add. So it's very important to understand the equilibrium point, adding every, I usually have a window time of 10 days. When you add supplements, wait 10 days before increase if you need, if the plant needs more supplements. Because the system in this week, in these 10 days, try, is trying to find a new point of equilibrium. So every 10 days, the plant show you if the supplements that you are adding is enough or not. The, the, the same thing for algae. But if the algae start to grow, don't think what happened yesterday, but probably one week or 10 days ago, because during this time, the plant, the system started to Fighting, kind of funny. So something is changing, and I try, I try to replace my new equilibrium point. Uh, okay. So, roots. The specific, another specific about the spider root is that the tannin, you know, that can release uh, and make the water yellow. The spider root probably is the is the material is good that releases less than compare with the other kind of food, right? That's right, so yeah. Okay, so it's very If you have tannins, for example, and the water starts to become yellow, for aquascaping maniac is not good. We want the super clear water, <laughs> transparent water. So what I usually recommend, we can use this kind of, oh, wait, this kind of chemical, uh, the media is fusion, you know fusion, have you ever used for? Yeah. You. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good stuff. It's a um, scavenger raisin. So absorb this kind of raisin, absorb only the organic uh, compound that you have in your tank. This means tannins, this means uh, waste productive by the fish, basically. And it's very good to use, especially in the summer, all the year, and especially if you don't do a, a very frequently. But of uh, well, it seems, uh, but I usually, I especially recommend during the summer because in the summer the temperature is in the water uh, increasing, and at the same time, so every kind of biological process so increase the organics, increase any kind of process. And uh, of course, when the plant, uh, when the temperature is higher, the plants start to growing less and absorbing less supplements. If you have some plants outside in the balcony, don't try during the summer, don't try to add water during the day because the plants close, close all the stomach and uh, stay in a kind of safe state. So you say, I need to reduce the possibility that the environment kills me, right? So it's like a shell, <laughs> right? And the same thing, not the same thing, but very similar to the plants in aquarium. So when the temperature is higher, I don't know, Fahrenheit is. I did go to convert to Celsius and Fahrenheit every time. <laughs> I have the air conditioner in the car, I have it. <laughs> anyway, the temperature is attacked, it's usually 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, plants start to reduce their metabolism. So the attention reduce also the supplement. These resin have to absorb and save your tank in this specific condition. It's very easy to understand when it's exhausted, because it's white when it's new, when it's completely exhausted. Saturated, it became brown, like a coke. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. So this means that it's not able to absorb more, 
you can buy a new one or you can regenerate. 50% water, 50% leads, and it's very important. Very important when you see the, the color turn back uh, white because the leads burn, the organics. It's very important to do a treatment. I recommend just to be sure 24 hours. <laughs> and you can change more time the water with prime. It's not because we have prime, it's because prime has a specific conditioner. Many conditioner in the market is kind of neutralizing the chlorine. This is a chlorine, chlorine base. So create a kind of layer around the chlorine molecule. And prime, alive, uh, cut the link between the two chlor. So this is why it works very well with pyrogen because the chlorine chlor is from the leads is linked to the resin. So if we use if you use this conditioner, you remove the chlor, 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 chlor from the from the resin and it became again available for absorb the the nutrient the, some, the organic that we have dissolved in the water. So it's very important to does that remove any of the other XL or any of the other No, it's very anything? important, yeah. This was my last point. It's very different if you compare with the carbon because it's very selective. The carbon removes everything, especially trace elements. It depends on the quality of the carbon. This is very selective, just organics. So no supplements, no XL, nothing else. And you can put... I have 20 gallon stack at home in Italy. I had. Sorry. <laughs> and I used to put 150, I have a canister filter, so I have good volume of filtration. And I put 250, so this for gallon is 250 gallon. I put in 20 gallon and stay six months without problems. So it's very, and it's not a problem if you overdose it because it's just absorbing what it's available, the organics available in your tank. So everything that's not good for your tank. Very, very easy to use and doable. So, um, I'm sorry, I just <laughs> open and close this argument. Go ahead with a, with a layout. There are basically, there are. I have a question. Do you have paper? Yeah. Uh, with a pencil? Yeah. Okay. That's the short view. For me, it's more easy to. <laughs> so, there are basically, there are three different kind of layout. So three start point, okay? And then you can personalize in function of the dimension of your tank and your point of view, your... So, uh, and now I show you that this kind of layout is a central layout. So what does it mean? We <coughs> concentrate our the focus point in the middle of the tank. And they usually, recommend this kind of layout in tank like this, it's kind of cube, cube tank, so you, where you can optimize all the, 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 all the different uh, side, so. Okay, this is a central layout, so we concentrate all plants, all decoration in the middle, and so we can see our tank, all that side, all the different side. So it's very important because depends where we put our tank at home. If it's near a, a wall or in the corner, maybe this kind of layout is not necessary because we see that our tank just in the front or one side. So maybe in that in that condition, a layout, a triangle layout is good, right? Because we concentrate the plant from here to here for the bigger point. I usually recommend, I usually divide in three parts higher of the tank and usually concentrate the, 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 the higher point of the, between the plants, higher level is the 60% of the total higher of the tank. This helps me to maintain good proportion and also optimize the surface circulation of the water. If I have a good, yeah, and this is very good, it's very easy to create and it's very good for I see here in the US we have a lot of tanks. They are very tall and very narrow. Uh -huh. Narrow. Okay. So it's not easy, for example, for this kind of tank 
recreate, replicate this kind of layout, it's the most complicated. So you concentrate two area with the decoration. Usually I maintain one bigger and one smaller to increase the uh, that, yeah, perception. Uh -huh. But it's not easy because for this layout you need a very depth to optimize. So this is more the easier solution for basically all kinds of depth, especially for you to have a tall depth. So for today we create, I would like to recreate this central layout because Yesterday when I arrived, I looked at this tank and I said, okay, this tank you can see from this side, in the front, on the other side. So it's a good solution, in my opinion, to optimize all the space that we have. And looking at different points of view, because we can... The, uh, aquascaping means the tail. So we can work on the tail in different sides. So every size, everywhere you see your, your layout, you can maybe look something different, right? So this is, when you use this kind of screws, how you can um, bond, you know, uh, I don't know, right? Okay, so a different solution. The easier solution is bring a, a frozen bag for the food, put the gravel, like this, for example, and put put your decoration and put on your decoration. It's very easy because you can place immediately your uh, finished layout, your layout, and then after one month you remove or depends on the that need and you can fix your fur directly in the in the water. How to use how to do that? You can do very easily you can do very easily with garbage glue. Arzu is a sonoprilate base of glue, very easy to use also on the outside and into the water. It's especially in the water catalyzed, the sonoprilate catalyzed very, very easily, very, very fast. And if you use out of the water, out of the tank, I recommend you to spray both surface, the plant, of course, <laughs> already wet, but the, the root, I suggest to dry wet the root and then pick the plant. So it's very easy to use. The other solution is bring a rock like this and a zip tie, like a fix different, like a fix now, fix the different pieces of wood and so anchor the woods on the on the bottom. It's not that's that actually usual. pretty heavy, yeah. That might actually sink down. So, it down, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 on it. so anyway, if I need to bond <laughs> this, maybe I put here with a zip tie and that to do the best position was to bond and then sit down without problem. So and I usually like to fix the different pieces of wood when I as uh, first, I look at the best, the best base of the wood, so the best shape, the best orientation, and then I bring another piece of wood, and I try to fix into the other one, looking the the best, uh, the best place where they can uh, be together, 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 like looking just the one one piece. Piece of wood. So this, what you do? Try to find to create something, uh, a layout that is not made with different points of different wood, but it looks like just one piece. So it's kind of so that. Right. Okay. I will put the rock. You got the rock. I mean, if you have a little space right there. Okay. Can, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another thing is when you start to create your layout, take your time. Don't do that after work, doing do that after in the weekend when you have time, when you can spend your time. 
a wife here. No, okay. <laughs> but your wife is give your credit card to your wife. <laughs> Stay away. So it's very important. We don't need to fix very very well, it's just temporary. So no worry, you can remove after and it's not necessary. Before Before to replace, replace the, the, the food in the tank, I would like to talk about how to, how, which kind of substrate you can use in function of the material you choose. Today, uh, I would like to use the do you know fluoride. Chicken fluoride is a mineral substrate. The substrate available in the market are basically two main categories. So, mineral substrates and organic substrates. The mineral substrate like fluoride are very easy to use. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very easy to use because they release, they don't increase or reduce the pH. So they maintain the water values very, very stable. And they release the mineral and so the supplements for plants very very uh, low slowly so what I mean the plant absorb just what they need no more if we have a substrate that release spontaneously the soil that release very fast a lot of supplements if we don't have a lot of plants or we don't do a lot of water change, we have a lot of supplements that stay in the water. And it's not good for us because it's good for us and it has to grow. So, the mineral, this kind of substrate is very, very to use and so durable on the time. You can have your, you can maintain your tank with the fluoride for many years without problem. It's good because it's mineral, so it's very hard and don't compact in the time. Very important because one of the main problems about the old tank is the anaerobic condition that could be created in the substrate because there are a lot of organics or because maybe the substrate was or the sand was used is too fine. And so during the year start to accumulate a lot of organics and create anaerobic condition. In this condition start to grow anaerobic bacteria that use the sulfur like and release sulfur. If we have a problem and we smell something bad, try to put your finger in the substrate. If you see some bubble coming out from the substrate, this means that this process is going on very fast. It's probably too late to resolve the problem. Or you can, or if it's not, you can try to solve the problem using specific material. Do you have a mediation here? There are specific bacteria, it's called a, in our, we have two products where this kind of bacteria are present. It's called a remediation in the upper vitro line and pristine in the line. This kind of bacteria are called heterotrophic bacteria. So they you basically use all, they decompose everything that is organic carbon based. So if you have a lot of organics in your tank, Accumulated, this kind of bacteria start to destroy this dust, this waste, and so recreating the aerobic bacteria and aerobic bacteria. So, if the condition, if you have an aerobic condition in your sub, all the substrate, first the aerobic bacteria start to work, recreating aerobic condition. So, then the other kind of bacteria into the supplement they start to grow again more, and this sort of solving your problem. I have I've seen a good result with cyanobacteria. Do you know cyanobacteria? Okay. Cyanobacteria is one of the organisms that remember. So they in the past they start to grow before evolving before the plants. So the, they use the photosynthesis photosynthesis <laughs> 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 like the plants, but they are bacteria. What does this mean? And 
easy example is when rain, and after you do this, you can see the hole near the street. I don't know here, but either we have a lot of stone. <laughs> <laughs> we have a problem with streets. Anyway, uh, after two days or the day after, start to grow a lot of green label on the on the wall. This is some of here. So this, I I told you this example to explain how they are easy to. How easy it is to grow? Yeah, easy to grow. <laughs> so, some of here can be a bit compared, can be uh, can be grow in your tank, especially when the uh, when you have a lot of organics, and uh, you can see very easily growing in the front of the tank. Maybe you can see many times a uh, green part on your on the in the front of your tank is some bacteria. So they grow in because they have organics, they have food. If we compete using pristine or remediation with this kind of bacteria and compete directly with a uh, bacteria, we kill the bacteria. The bacteria of remediation, decomposing and remove the waste. So the bacteria say, I don't have nothing to eat. Okay. Bam. Die. So very, very easy to eat. So fluoride. Uh, this white fluoride is reducing its, the components and the granulometry. The size of the fluoride is good because don't create this kind of situation, anaerobic situation. So, uh, the idea for today was create a, a central layout and to reduce the maintenance, <laughs> I uh, decided to put in the front the decorative sand and just in the back the floor line. How to divide the two areas? You can have two, uh, two solutions. The first one is easier, it's place divided two areas that you want and place that the rocks and put the, the, the sand in the front and the south in the back. But we, we like to complicate our life so the second solution is carbon. So very it's, it's not complicated it's easy enough but just move this more flexible. So the Italian people are not well known to be taller. <laughs> <laughs> we have a problem with the evolution. <laughs> All right. Thanks God. <laughs> I don't like to put a lot of, of sand in the front, especially if the sand is very fine, very thin. Just to reduce the problem with the anaerobic condition and the bacteria. And also because it's very, very, very easy to clean. I usually, to clean, especially the white, the dry sand, to clean that, I don't. So, first, <laughs> remove, don't use the siphon in this kind of tank. Put your siphon. On the other side, the other way, because every time that you use the siphon, you remove bacteria, you remove organics that the plant can eat. 
you can siphon the heat in the front of the of the tank, but the Norizon you have just an half inch of, of sand. I usually like to when I do a water change uh, this the stick wood, the same that used for the food, right? I just move a little bit the the, the sand and then so, so all the waste go on the column, onto the column in the water, and then with the tube I remove all of that. So very easy and you don't disturb the bacteria colony that are growing on, under the sand, under the sand. There are different kinds of, of chloride available. You can, the black one is my favorite because it's black, it's a natural color, but there are chloride red, chloride, the classic chloride, and chloride dark. The color is different because the minerals are different. For example, the fluoride black have more calcium magnesium than the and the fluoride red have more iron. The fluoride red have more iron. So, but this does not make a big difference between the different substrates. So you can choose your substrate in function of the your color, the color, and of the size. The fluoride red have a bigger size if compared with the fluoride black. So, choose what you need. Fluorite is a is a really a natural substrate, and some this substrate arrive in Sikkim, done any process any process, so this arrive and this packet immediately. So sometimes could be could have more uh, dust. So many people ask me, as to us, if it is to do lines before. Uh, my opinion. Usually, I like to work with a dry substrate, it's better, it's easier to work with them. But if it's really dust, I recommend to rinse with the water. Rinse, right? Wash, rinse. Rinse. Rinse with the water. And then. Oh, something's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, rinse with the water and then put it in your tank. Okay, it's very important before to remove the cardboard that the level of the sand is higher than the, the fluoride. So, because if you remove, and especially if the fluoride is dry, 
the chloride can drop, uh, fall down. Okay. There right, we go. Next step is I usually prefer to fix the moss if I need to fix the, some plants on my on the wood. I prefer to do that this before to spray. But today, just to show you different steps, I just replace this wood now. You think? Yeah. You want to change something? No, I just, I always look for, uh, to be far enough to make sure that I can still clean the glass with the magnet. Without oh, moving. yeah. So that's what I always do. This is a good point. Yeah. It's very important to maintain, like I said before, I group all the circulation. No, it's very easy. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> good point. It's, I need, you need many, many years of experience yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when you uh, cut the, another you know, thing, when you cut, you need to cut uh, a piece of wood, so don't never cut like this, so it's not, we don't like this cut, it's not natural, right? So when, when you have a small one, you can do that, so that's great. If you have a bigger one, I try to, I start to do with a, how do you call it, plant? So, if I need to break here, I go on the opposite side, and I start to do some more. So sometimes, this, you can do that very easily, but if you need to remove this, there's no reason, you need to cut. By doing this with a little bit of patience, Cut it, cut it, cut it, you need to move. So, right. so your cut is network, it's not efficient, it's not very clean. Because you just introduce that there is a cut and then you See this layout from different sides. You can see here <coughs> all the have the different the branch. Branch have the same direction. This means that is. I learned this from an international very good aquascaper in Brazilian, and he told me that when he usually create a layout, is innate that this kind of layout is under a water flow in a river. So in the river, the water flows in have that one direction, right? So he plays all the decoration, the rocks and the woods on the following the same direction, imagine the water flow. So it makes sense, okay? So you have an idea. So there's a reason, right? I, I read, I talk again about what I introduce when I start. Everything that we do have there's a reason if I place and we place and we should place different approach. So after we, I don't like this, so we need to hide in some in something. So it's very important to fix very well to stay here for a long time, and then after the main skeleton layout, start to add the, the rocks. There are many <coughs> kind of rocks available. The most common are probably, you know, these are small pieces. These dragon stones, okay? There are main, two main categories of rocks. Inert rocks and carbonatics based rocks. So the cereal stones and like these river rocks are completely inert, so they don't release calcium carbonate, so they don't increase the pH and the alkalinity 
uh, in your tank. So these kind of rocks are perfect to use combo with this kind of substrate because chloride don't increase the values and if you use this kind of rocks you don't increase the values so your water values still stable. If you use an organic substrate we have for example aqua solum you know, aqua vitroline aqua solum is organic substrate it's a kind of planet or round there so it's a soil but it's not different if compared with other kinds of organic soil. It's a humane. Do you know compost? It's humus, not what you eat. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> compost, okay. <coughs> compost is a process. The compost process means everything that is organic became mineral. Uh, Aquasolum is a uh, humane. So this means that if compared with the other kind of soil, in aqua solum, most of the organics are completely converted in mineral. What does this mean? I told you before that many substrates release a lot of nutrients immediately, very fast in your water. This is not the case of aqua solum. It's releasing slowly, but it's definitely more rich in terms of nutrients if compared with, uh, <coughs> with the fluoride. So aqua solum reduce and like any other kind of organic soil, reduce the pH because absorbing the calcium and the a part of the magnesium, so reduce the pH temporarily. But don't release a lot of organics. So if you put if you use aqua solum and you put two anubias, three zarfern, no problem. As it don't start to grow because the nutrients are very, very low. Um, but with this kind of soil that to stabilize very quickly the pH and the alkalinity, you can use is another substrate that we have available. It's a mineral substrate. It's called onyx sand. Onyx sand is based by calcium and magnesium, high level of calcium and magnesium. So onyx sand buffering the aqua solid. Aqua solid absorb carbonate and onyx sand release carbonate. If you don't use onyx sand, these kind of rocks, there are different names, commercial names. The most popular is Cereal Stones. I don't know here, it's mountain, river, yes, mountain stone. <coughs> so these rocks and many other kind of stones, they have specific, oh, you can see here, the white stripes, white part, this white part, this white part. This is basically calcium carbonate. Especially if you have the pH is lower and lower than 6.8, 6.5. Very acid. What is acid? The acid of the carbonate. So increase again. So what does it mean? If you use these rocks with the upper solum, the rocks, especially if you add in CO2, reacting and buffering the upper solum. So these rocks are perfect with organic substrate. You can use also with uh, mineral substrate, but just few, not a lot, because if you use a lot of these stones, you can stabilize very quickly the pH in your tank. So it's more difficult to adjust to maintain stable. So for this reason today, <laughs> I like to use that kind of rock. So what do you usually do? I start to place the rock. Everything, there is a reason, there's a reason for everything. So, this part of the wood you see is curved. So, I try to. And maybe I can put here some moss to link it. So, so the two material, different material, but if you put the moss, the leaf, the rock with the wood, it looks like something that is natural and burned. So the same. Put moss right here, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> After we put the moss there, yeah, of course. It's very ugly.
So it's very important don't put in the, in the same line. So very irregular, not regular. So if you see now, I put, I tried to put the, the stones in the most natural position as possible, but we are not able to do that. So, what we can do to do that, to, mix some, to make something more natural, if you use, for example, the gravel stones, this one, for example, is a bigger piece of iron, of course. I bring, if you need, for example, five rocks, I usually buy six rocks, and the last one I break with a hammer, and I put in small pieces and then, make sure it's not the case, you, you cannot break this, but if you have small pieces, don't put like now, like this, like this, no, put like this. So this makes more natural. For this, I bring another kind of uh, sand with different size and different color. So these remember like the, the side of the river when the flow accumulates a lot of woods and a lot of stones and you can see different color and different size and dimension. So I try to do the same with the material that we have available. Another, maybe to have at least available another size of this one, right? A bigger one. From this one. So I saw when I was looking, there are different sizes, another a bigger size of big. So you can mix another size and create a mix more natural, right? All right. So another. Enough. So, next step, the most. <laughs> when I usually create my aquarium, I usually prefer before to work on my hardscape, and then in function of the hardscape, I come back to the store and I buy the specific species that, in my opinion, are good for uh, com complete to finish the layout because we usually this happened many times. I, I go to the store, I buy some woods, maybe I try the store in a specific position, but when I come back home and I try on the tank, maybe that position was not perfect, not op the optimal. And I change. So many times the layout changed completely and the plans that I saw before now are not the, the best solution for this kind of for the new layout. So this is why my step is take my time doing the hardscape and then come back to the store and buy the plant that in my opinion are the best solution for this kind of layout. So I choose all of these plants more or less are very easy to maintain. You can maintain these plants also without CO2. Okay, CO2 is recommended, always, every time, because CO2 is like oxygen for us, for plants, of course. <laughs> uh, so it's very important because it's a reagent in a photosynthesis reaction. I would like to spend two, just a minute comparing Excel with the CO2. Man, do you know Excel? Excel is a carbon source for plants. Many people confuse Excel, carbon source like a liquid CO2. It's completely wrong. Because many people thinking that it's a CO2 overdose. For us, it's good. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's not good for your plants and for your fish. 
because Excel is a reducing agent if you're overdosing and I'm talking about 10 times more some people do that <laughs> 10 times more the dosage recommended you can reduce the oxygen on your tank and it's not good for fish I hope that and start to burn the plants so uh, while CO2 is a reagent in a photosynthesis reaction what Excel does is that Excel catalyzes the photosynthesis reaction so what does this mean? reduce the energy that the plant spent for make the photosynthesis reaction it's a kind of sugar <laughs> for plant very energy source, very easy to use <coughs> and so the process of the photosynthesis process could go ahead using less energy and it's very good especially when the plants have the, the light is very low in density you don't have CO2 so the metabolism of the plant is lower and specific condition unstable values like I introduced before so the plants are not able to find the specific the right position <laughs> the right metabolism so in all these conditions sand is perfect it's perfect it's like very easy to use and absorbed by the plants so don't misunderstanding Excel is a carbon source. It's also in part used by the bacteria because the carbon source is for the bacteria, but it's used especially for plants. There are many, just to introduce is uh, many, many photon is glutaride dye. It's not basically a glutaride dye. Glutaride is, for people that know that, it's, uh, it's used in the uh, surgery to disinfect the, the tools so it's very dangerous this is a uh, isomeric so what is the difference the molecular is the same but external so it's like I usually explain the chair if it was the literal dye the chair no I can interact and I can sit very easily right so the chair can interact very easily with me an isomeric molecular is the same chair, but turn. So I don't recommend to sit. <laughs> so the interaction is less. But so the plant can use it in, in the same way very easily, but it's more safe, especially for fish, because it's not kill the fish. So this is the big difference between Excel and other competitor brands, carbon source. So the molecule is the same, but we find the best solution to maintain these component, the main component, very safe for fish and for plants. So the uh, plants that I choose today are Crip, Java Moss, Java Fur, I'm sorry. Uh, Anubias, Davamos, uh, Apunogeto, Madagascariensis. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite plants. So when I see that, okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and another beautiful plant that I really like it is a Nymphaea Lotus, right? So this one and this one is a beautiful mix. Because this make the the, the leaf just in one growing, and this growing created just a kind of background, so increase the color, create a good contrast also with the straight leaf. You know, it's like a green, but it's beautiful, and create a good contrast with the plant. So we can divide the plant that we use three different level. The foreground plants, but we don't use today because we use the gravel. The foreground plants are like the Egras, Eleocaris Padula, uh, some creep, uh, Cryptopadma, for example, it's still very short, very low maintenance, low demanding plants. <coughs> but most of the foreground plants are the most popular need high intensity light and need CO2 and a lot of supplements. So it's not a good 
option for this kind of tank, for the idea of this tank. The creep, so the, the plan for the middle, and usually are creep, the most popular, or another species that I like is Taurotine, my friends, very, very nice. And I use, I usually like to use some hygrophila, especially the Pinatipila. <coughs> I like to choose some plants, <coughs> some specific species, because I like to introduce, when I start, some species can show us what, how the, the tank is going on. The, for example, the hydrophila species is very sensitive about potassium. Potassium is one of the three macronutrients. It's very, very important. But if phosphorus and nitrogen could be introduced by the waste uh, produced by the fish or the food that we have, the potassium is just the mineral that we must introduce. So many times we have problems with a low concentration of potassium in our in, our, in the tank. <coughs> potassium is very important because it increases the gas exchange and also the absorption of the nutrients by the leaf. All the leaf in the plants, <coughs> the tree also, have some kind of hole in the bottom of the leaf. It's called uh, stomach. And this stomate is, is a kind of door. It's open and closed by two pumps. The sodium pumps and the potassium pumps. If the potassium is lower, you have just one door that works. <laughs> so you reduce, <coughs> you know, have you ever seen some bubble of oxygen releasing by the leaf? This bubble are releasing, it's oxygen, it's the end production of the photosynthesis reaction and it's released by this hole, this stomach. And also, uh, most plants like stem plants, like Rotola Valiki, uh, I say, is the, is the stem plant usually adds the Rotala and the Vija, etc., etc. This kind of stem plant absorb more than 60% by of the nutrients by the leaves. This is why they don't have a lot of roots. Plants like the creep absorb so the rosettes, rosette plant, with the big root, absorb over the 60% of the nutrient by the roots. This is why people, some many people ask me how often I should uh, how long the substrate maintain the property nutrients properly and I say which kind of plant do you have in your tank? If you have 90% of trees, probably in one year. If you have 90% of stem plants, probably in three years, because that kind of plant absorb most of the nutrients by in the column. So by the liquid supplement. And why these plants with the big roots absorb most by the roots, especially by the roots. All of them anyway they uh, absorb also through the leaves. <clears throat> so potassium is very important and the Vita species is very sensitive. When the uh, concentration of potassium is low, there are some specific um, symptoms. Okay? In the leaf, you can see in the leaf of the especially for the nutrient. On the leaf you can start to see a, a black hole or the not like a mosquito yeah. 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 okay so it's a black so this is very typical and the color start to become more, more dry so it's very very it's very, it's very important in my opinion use specific plant because have to understand some specific deficiency that we have in our time I know uh, Good plants, in my opinion, is the Prosepinata palustis you have in that time. This that uh, that plant, that species, and the Vita also are very sensitive in function of they change their leaf, leaf in function of the pH. I see, especially in Hygrophila pinatifida, 
that the, when the pH is below 7, so when it's 7, 7.3, 7 7.4, the leaf still green. When the pH starts to uh, reduce, it, the leaf became first brown, and around 6.3, 6.5, the leaf became pink. Because also the, the, the plant absorbing better the nutrients in function of the pH. Iron is very well absorbed on the range of pH 6.3, 6.78. So this is a good range. This is why if you see your plants turning, have a specific this kind of this my this I see this piece. You can understand if your how your pH is the level of your pH and if the plants are absorbing efficiently, especially the iron. I grow uh, the, the Pinaca palustris change the, the leaf, just a second. So, uh, what I usually start to do? First, I start to adding to fix the, the, the fern and the plant that make the skeleton of the layout. First, I try to find uh, some hole, some areas where this plant can grow, it can stay, no problem. And I try to cover, to hide, sorry, first the, the zip tile, every part of the layout that I don't like. Uh, another thing, when arrive, when these plants arrive in the store, they come from the nursery. The nursery, of course, like every kind of company, the products should be stay in the nursery as as possible, right? So they don't grow these kind of plants under the water, but outside with the hydroponic technology. So the ninety percent of the plants that we use, except for the Vanisneria. Have a kabomba, are the rest of plants, so they can live outside the water. That plants can live just in the water. So what I usually do before to introduce my plants, I prune the other leaf because are the less reactive. So doing this, I stimulate the plant to produce new leaves. The new leaves will be very already a bit, uh, already ready to absorb the nutrients in your tank because they are the structure of the leaf is good is adapted to the submersed condition. How you can increase this process using a specific supplement is a called. Uh, we, we have a specific supplement to do that, it's called a uh, Trosh Advance. It's a phytohormones based supplement. The phytohormones have the cytokinin, etc., etc., uh, have to promoting the new tissue of the plants, new leaves, new root, new tissue, new plant, uh, new leaves, and new roots. So, what basically do is the phytohormones improve the metabolism of the plants. Uh, no, not correct. Right. This is correct. Right. The phytohormones produce the new tissue, have to produce, mediating the producing of new tissue. But the plants, like every other kind of uh, organism, when it's introduced in a new system, is need to change uh, to find the new, the new condition, right? The new stable point. It's like for us. When I come back from Italy, usually I need one week for, <laughs> for adapting <laughs> and try to sleep eight hours. It's the same for plants. The plants usually need one week, ten days for adapting. And if we add in a rate just phytohormones, we use the plant use a lot of the nutrients that she saved in the rhizome in this case. And so when and you it's not good. Because the plant, if the plant is stressed, stressed, we stress more the plant, and we say use more than your energy. 
and not proactive. So this is why we introduced some energy source and macronutrients. Energy source is like acid ascorbic, vitamin C, so a kind of orange juice for plants, and some specific macronutrients, phosphorus and potassium, calcium, magnesium and potassium, if I remember well. Yeah. And also some uh, specific uh, amino acid. Probably the most important is the alanine. Alanine reduce is a specific amino acid that reduce the stress for plants. So this kind of elements have the plants to adapt in in the in the aquarium and the phytohormones mediating the new leaves and the new tissue. Especially with okay, this I prune the old leaf in the in the fern. So if I don't have a place, if I have a with the water. Does the glue affect the rhizome or the roots at all? Like, do you try to keep it to the rhizome or to the roots? Or yeah. Like, does it? Aside from just adhering it to the wood, does it cause any negative effect to the... No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, this is a good point, and I really would like to talk about that. With rhizome, there's no problem. If you fix if you fix the moss, it's a totally different story. The tissue of the rhizome are very strong, so no problem. The tissue of the moss is more delicate, so for the moss, you finally <laughs> hide this part. <laughs> With the moss, uh, I usually use some drops, a few drops, and not just a line. So this hat, especially for moss, there are the most popular moss are the Available are the Java moss, so it's a Taxifilum species, and the Christmas moss is a Vesicularia. The Taxifilum have more micro roots, so this is not a problem. It's growing very fast, and is uh, anchor, anchor very well in all the surface. The Christmas moss or Vesicularia species have less roots, micro roots. So it's more difficult for these species to anchor very well on the surface. So mm -hmm. for this reason, I usually like to fix first with a few drops of the glue, especially if I have water, and then with a fish line. Wait, this is the concept. So fix as much as possible the moss on the on the on the on the, on the decoration. All right. So what I have. Remove all the old leaves and leave that melt, melting. Melt, melting? Mm -hmm. okay. Because they increase organics and not good, especially when you start up a new tank. Don't worry if they just one leaf. This is more than enough to make photosynthesis, so have the plants to don't use all the nutrients that are in the rhizome. So, no problem. Back. Okay, you can mix different species. You have in that tank the Molbitis and the Lodi. So I usually like to mix Molbitis with uh, Java Fern because they have different con have good contrast because the leaves are completely different. The Molbitis is a dark green and it's a bright, bright green, light green. 
uh, different shapes, so it's a good thing. What is really trying to take some out of the egg? Yeah, okay. It grows like crazy in there, oh, so we really? need to bring it in. Perfect. So, yeah, I bring up it. So, it's very important to don't, it's not an English garden, you know, the English, not, it's Italian, sorry, Italian garden, where the, the plants are mixed. There are different species, but placed in a specific position. It's a kind of English garden, so many species mix it, it's other like happening in nature, right? You see? So I like to shave and mix it. So, about grapes. And it's very important when you buy the plant with the, in the pond, remove all of these wood, substrate, because it's very rich of nutrients. And the supplement, thank you so much. And the supplements that we use, that they use in the nursery use, is not the same that we use it. So um, there could be some heavy metal or some other nutrients that we don't, we cannot add in the, uh, introducing in the, in the water. And it's available, and there are with different dips, dips, different sizes. Dips. And this is not because we have and it's, there's, there's a reason for it, all of them. So the bigger one, I recommend, especially for big plants, for, for planting the apologetum, like this, because have more surface and more grip. It's not very good if you use small plants, very, very small plants, because the surface is high and you squeeze, you squeeze, okay? So you damage the tissue, so for small plants, it's definitely a better solution than this kind of tools. And there's a reason if we have one with a 45 degrees angle. Because one of the main errors that people do when plants is... Plant straight. And especially to the, in, the, in the tank there is a water, if you plant like this, straight, now it's not a problem. But with the water, the plant comes back and slowly. If I plant with a 45 angle, like this, I put here just to show you. This, the substrate is heavy, so lock the, the plant, and you can remove the tool without problem, the forest without problem. So the plant is there. And don't worry if it's not it's not straight but it's good. With the light, the leaf following the light come back straight. So the bud is too big for this. <laughs> we have another tool is specifically studied for this kind of woods. I have a lot. I have very no rarely I use <laughs> this kind of plant, not you are very lucky. This this store have a lot of beautiful plants. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait one month before to start to adding supplements on your tank. Why? Because the plant, if the plant are adapted, when you see the plant start to produce new leaves, the plant this means that the plants are adapted in the new system, the new aquarium, the new environment. So they are ready to absorb. The don't wait. So many people make this error, so they wait because they oh, I need to have a stable tank before to put the fish or put and start the supplement, and they wait a month. Do it a month, the plants, yes, it's, the tank is stable, but in that condition. When you introduce something, that, like I told you before, the plant needs time to find the new pond. So, I usually recommend the first 10 days with Dorsh Advance and then you can go ahead with twice a week. But after 10 days, if you see the plants start to produce new leaves, start to adding the supplement that the plants maybe can need. For these plants, probably you don't need a lot of supplement. Just Flourish is a comprehensive uh, supplement. Flourish in Excel and just a bit iron. And I, I recommend that for the reason that I told you before. So these four products.
it's not raining for a month, your tap water is very hot because there are a lot of mineral uh, solvent in the water. So this one, and maybe you hope every time, every two weeks or three weeks, or every time you do a water change, maybe you use 50% other water, 50% tap water, or 100% tap water. But every time you introduce in your tank a water with different values, but also that contain some minerals that are not good for tank for the tank. The most common in the silicates. Silicates are not. You cannot remove the silicate with a conditioner, like uh, to be a heavy metal, for example. And they could be accumulated in your tank. The silicates, the specific kind of algae, is a kind of algae with diatoms. Where the and they have the, the cell wall of diatoms. Diatoms is made by silicate. So when you have silicates in your tank, the diatoms probably start to grow. And it's very easy to understand because you see, especially in the on the rocks, start to produce like a brown layer. So this diatom is not good. And the plant cannot use silicate. So they accumulate. So this is why we recommend other water, osmosis, rest, the rest osmosis water with specific salt. It's very reduce the problem that you can have in your tank. It's very easy. So all of these reduce problem, make you happy, right? Because if you don't have problem, you say, okay, my go my tank is going to have without problem. So perfect. <laughs> And, and you enjoy your hobby, this is the main thing, because we are, I, I, I say again, it's a hobby, right? So we need to figure out the, the best solution to go ahead with a hobby and maintain the aquarium like a hobby in other words. So this, all of these are suggest that they can, we can share with you and say, this is our experience, try and let me know. <laughs> this cool. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. No problem, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Very, very thank you. Thank you. Wasn't that fun? So I'll be back next week with the July mailbag. I'm going to try kind of a new format with that too. So it might be pretty interesting. And, uh, or maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> but that's coming up. Okay, so I guess that's all I have for you today. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.